A to Z Mysteries, Super Edition Four, Sleepy Hollow Sleepover by Ron Roy. Chapter Nine. Twenty seconds later, Josh and Ruth Rose were climbing under the tarp with Dink. Look, Dink said. He reached inside the horse's stomach and pulled out one of the bags. Is that what I think it is? Ruth Rose asked. Dink nodded. Remember, we saw those guys bringing it into the bank yesterday. He asked. You mean that's all money? Josh gulped. Yeah, and there are about ten more bags inside the horse. Dink said. Holy moly! Josh gasped. How did it get there? I'm not sure. Dink replied. He thought for a minute. Maybe the robbers put it there, he said. But that woman, Bonnie, told the police that they only took two hundred dollars. Ruth Rose said, "There must be a lot more than that in only one of these bags." Then she wasn't telling the truth, Dink said. But why? Wait a minute, Josh said. Maybe Bonnie is one of the crooks. She could have hid the money in the horse and. You're right," Dink said. "She must have taken the money out of the vault this morning after it opened automatically." Just then, they heard the truck's doors open. The truck rocked as someone climbed into the cab, and the doors slammed one after the other. Then the engine roared. When the truck started moving, Dink thought he was going to be sick. The three of them were trapped in the truck. The ride was noisy and bumpy. What are we gonna do? Josh asked. His head was scrunched up next to Dink's elbow. I don't know, Dink said. It was hot under the tarp. Sweat ran into his eyes, making them sting. Well, I do, Ruth Rose said. She was curled up like a pretzel near Josh's knees. She pulled out her cell phone. I'm calling Officer Clever. Call nine one one. Dink said, "It'll be faster." Ruth Rose tapped in the three digits. She shook her head at the boys. Then she tried it again. Nothing, she whispered. I can't get any signal. Maybe we can jump out, Josh said. No, we're going too fast, Dink said. But I have an idea. He grabbed a bag of money and untied the twine that kept it closed. Then he yanked out a fistful of money and handed it to Josh. Throw this out the back of the truck," he said. "What are you crazy?" Josh cried. "We'll leave a money trail," Dink explained. "People will see it, and maybe they'll call the cops. The money could lead them to this truck." "That's a great idea," Ruth Rose said. She pulled a handful of bills from the bag and slipped her hand under the edge of the tarp. "I did it," she said. "I threw money away." The kids pulled all the money out of the bag and dropped it under the tarp, out of the truck. What if those guys up front see the money flying around? Josh said. If they do, they'll stop. Dink said. Then maybe we can get away. Then he had another idea. Ruth Rose, do you have a marker in your book bag? He asked. Of course, she said. She opened the small zippered pocket. What color? Any color, but quick. Dink said. Ruth Rose handed Dink a blue marker. Dink grabbed it and scrawled, "Call the police" on the empty money bag. He tossed the bag out of the truck. A minute later, the truck swerved, then slowed. It stopped. Dink put his fingers to his lips. Maybe he thought they'll leave the truck and we can hop out and run away. Dink heard the men walking near the side of the truck. Let's get this baby inside," a voice said. The voice was only ten inches from Dink's ear. Suddenly, the tarp was yanked away. Bright sunlight made the kids squint. The truck was parked in front of a barn behind an old house. The yard was full of weeds. An old car sat on cinder blocks because it had no tires. Two men stared down at the kids. "What are you little rats doing?" one of them asked. It was the tall man. Dink couldn't say a word. He thought he'd swallowed his tongue. 
Ace, look, the chubby man said. He pointed to the open door in the horse's side. They know about the money. I can see that for myself, Goose, Ace said. He stared at the kids. All right, who are you? How'd you get in this truck? Never mind who we are, Ruth Rose shouted. Let us go, or I'm calling the cops. She showed the man her cell phone. Ace reached for the phone, but Ruth Rose dropped it on the trunk bed. Dink grabbed the phone and started to punch in a number. Ace snatched the phone out of Dink's hands. Now what, little boy? He asked as he slipped the phone into his shirt pocket. Dink recognized the man's voice. He looked down and saw silver toes on cowboy boots. You set the wagons on fire last night, Dink said. Ace smirked. Yep, and my buddy Goose let the air out of that cop's tires, he said. Kept those guys busy, didn't it? said Goose. Now we got a surprise for you kids, right, Ace? Right, let's stash them in the barn, Ace said. Then we'll paint the truck and get out of here. The chubby man reached for Josh. Watch it, buddy, Josh said. He held up his hands. I know karate. Me too, Goose said, and I'm bigger than you. The men yanked the kids out of the truck. They marched them into the barn. Put them down here, I said. He pointed to a hole in the barn floor. I'm afraid of dark places, Josh said. I'll throw up. Sorry about that, I said. One by one, he and Goose lowered the three kids by their arms into the deep hole. Dink, Josh, and Ruth Rose crouched in the dark space. It was an underground room with a dirt floor and walls. All the tin cans and bottles lay everywhere. Some still had stuff in them. The smell of rotting food and damp dirt nearly made Dink gag. Enjoy your stay in the barn hole hotel, Goose yelled down at them. You'll never get away, Ruth Rose yelled up at the men. People know we're here. They'll come and find us. In your dreams, little girl, Goose said. But don't worry. When we're a hundred miles away, we'll use your cute little cell phone to let the cops know where we stashed you. Then the kids watched in horror as he slid something solid over the hole. Now they were in pitch darkness. They heard the men's footsteps as they crossed the barn floor above. Then there was just black silence. A few seconds later, they heard a motor, and something heavy shook the floor above their heads. It's the truck, Dink said. They must have brought it into the barn to paint it. I feel so stupid for letting that guy get my cell phone, Ruth Rose said. Now what are we going to do? Guys, I have something to tell you, Dink said. Let's sit down. Where? Josh asked. This floor is nasty. Move some of this junk out of the way, Dink said. Toss it in a corner. Dink could hear Josh fumbling and muttering in the dark a few feet away. Suddenly, Ruth Rose gasped. What's wrong? Dink asked. I touched someone, Ruth Rose said. Her voice was trembling. I think it was a body, 